Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that there are big differences between being a man and being a gentleman. Ah oh boy. I've been waiting a long time when it came to this one. I've avoided talking about this back when hashtag speaking out began because we just didn't have very much info to go on, but things are a lot clearer now. So when hashtag speaking out started, we saw story after story of wrestlers using their platform, their fame, and their position to sexually mistreat others, be it fans or fellow wrestlers. In response, some companies immediately punished or cut ties with the accused, while others ultimately did nothing. The WWE actually did both. When NXT UK names began circulating, Travis Banks and Ligero, as well as a pair of referees, were fired. Joe Coffey was suspended also, as he was accused of sending unsolicited dick pics and harassment, while the others were accused of physical abuse and grooming. Of course, when we talk about speaking out and the WWE together, people often talk about Matt Riddle and Velveteen Dream, neither of which were punished, and in Riddle's case, the accuser is actually making a better case for him than the defense attorneys ever could. More on that later, though. To sum things up, NXT UK cut ties with the alleged abusers, but proper roster performers, that is the ones who are on weekly televised programming, were exempt, almost protected with one notable exception. Gentleman Jack Gallagher, a shoot fighter turned comedy performer was fired right away after an accuser named Becky gave her account of a New Year's Eve party in 2014 where Gallagher was tampering with her drinks and attempted to sexually assault her in a bathroom. This sucked for me to read back in June. I'm a genuine fan of Gallagher as a performer. I liked his moveset, I liked his comedy spots, I liked his look, before he got that butt fugly tattoo anyway, and he was legitimately the reason I would tune into 205 Live every Tuesday over their launch here in 2016. I was even looking for excuses to put together a top list to garner him some attention. I ended up scrapping that video in the summer. I'm not somebody who tends to forgive a person's indecent actions off camera just because I like their work on camera, as has been noted over several videos when Chris Benoit's name comes up. But Gallagher was fired immediately and, after a few months out of the limelight, he released a statement at the beginning of October. In 2014, at a New Year's Eve party, I met a young woman and my behavior towards her was inappropriate. As this party was nearly six years ago and I had drunk quite a larger amount of alcohol that night, unfortunately, I do not recollect what happened. I wish to make it clear that drinking is not an excuse for my behavior that night. I want to express my deepest regrets, and I'm genuinely sorry for the upset I have caused. He mentioned going to the WWE personally before any investigation was open, and he was terminated for violating their ethics policy. Gallagher continued, This isolated incident is not reflective of my behavior and attitude towards women. As a man, I know I can do better, and with the support of my wife, I have taken the time over the last few months to understand what I can do. But this is not about me, but about the women that come forward as part of hashtag speaking out movement. I will continue to support women and this movement to the best of my ability. I have to really tiptoe and be careful with my words when it comes to this story. What he did was undeniably wrong. Hell, he admitted this himself and accepted the consequences. It's clear that the incident holds heavy on him to this day, and I appreciate the genuine show of responsibility. He didn't deny it. He didn't spin it. He didn't threaten to sue his accuser over lost cameo revenue. Seriously, what the fuck, Joey? Your time's coming too, man. Anyway, Jack gave an honest, humble, and encouraging statement that basically says believe and support the accusers as they right our wrongs. So with that, the questions become, should Jack Gallagher be forgiven? And should he eventually be allowed back into the locker room? Throughout the business, some, like Joey Ryan, have been completely cast out and blackballed from the industry. Others, like Velveteen Dream and James Ellsworth, another person I want to talk about soon in another video, have been welcomed back and are performing at shows right now as if they were cleared of all claims. In Ellsworth's case, the opposite is true, actually, but I gotta stay on topic here. Ultimately, Becky never needs to forgive Gallagher. That's her right. That's a bridge burned and all parties are gonna have to live with that. As for promotions and whether Gallagher can ever work in this industry at a high level again, I think the world's gonna be a bit more open to him. Maybe not now, but eventually. I'll say it again, what he did was wrong. Really wrong. But he handled everything as professionally as he possibly could. He claims he was blackout drunk, but didn't use that as an excuse to claim innocence. Rather, he used it to admit culpability. I can fully believe at that time he saw signals that weren't there. 
that he failed to realize that her answer was no, which is consistent with notes in Becky's version, which included her refusing to sit on his lap so he would sit on hers. And he should be thanking all of the forces in the universe that things didn't go full on Brock Turner. It's a very different story if he had raped somebody. But the real thing that works to his favor here is that there has been no second accuser. In the five and a half years since this happened, no one else has spoken up, despite claims from Becky that there were more people. Because of that, this could be seen as an isolated incident, one of incredibly bad judgment. One that he's learned his lesson from well before he was ever actually punished for those very actions. People do grow and people do learn, and I fully believe, respect, and feel for Becky after what happened. Especially that it had gone as far as it had. With that said, Gallagher has a much better case for earning his way back into the ring than most of the names that have come out in 2020. There are only two things that really could truly put an end to his time as a professional wrestler on the big stage. One being more accusers stepping up, especially more recent accusers. The other being that god-awful tattoo. Okay, so that was a bad attempt at lightening the mood with a joke, and I apologize, but I do want to know where you stand on Jack Gallagher and how he handled the sexual assault allegations against him. I don't need to ask if you believe Becky, as he himself more or less corroborated her story. But do you accept his apology? Do you feel he's genuinely grown since New Year's Eve 2014, or do you think he's just trying to save face? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, because I want you to be a part of the conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.